It's time to get the toys out of the garage. Today, we'll show you what you can do to get your RV, your boat, and the UTV running after they've been put away for the season. Gentlemen, start your engines. I don't know where you found this, but I like it. Yeah. Hey, welcome to Truck U. I'm Matt Steele. Hi, I'm Bruno Mass. Now, this is one of our favorite times of year because warm temperatures are right around the corner, and that means time to bring out the toys, and that's what we're doing out here today. The only thing is, a couple of these have been sitting for a while, so we want to do a couple things. Well, this thing hasn't been sitting long at all. It's a nope. 2013 Polaris Crew Cab Ranger. This thing is awesome. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've yep. also got a pretty cool boat here. It's a 2002 Mastercraft. You know, you got the wakeboards in tow. But the big focus of our day is going to be on this 2010 Cyclone RV trailer. Now, it's got all the bells and whistles you'd want out of you know, a trailer like this. The thing is, if you want it ready to come out during the springtime before you put it away over the winter, there's some things you need to do in terms of winterizing. One of the nice things about doing an RV project is the fact that you know who here comes in as a real strong asset and not so much a liability. It's nice to. Well, having lived in a van by a river for so long, you start to pick up some survival tips that correlate to something like this. When you talk about an RV and winterizing, the biggest things you want to keep in mind is you've got all this fluid going through. You've got your holding tanks. You've got a black tank, you've got a gray, and you've got the fresh water. They all need to be drained by simply opening up the valves, let gravity drip it all out. Now, the problem is, is gravity alone isn't going to get all the water out of all those lines that run throughout this entire RV. So you need to use antifreeze to go ahead and cover that system to make sure everything's protected. Now, it's not the antifreeze that's going to go in your coolant system on your truck or your car. It's the pink stuff you'll buy at the big box store or the automotive parts store. Now, what you do with a modern system like this, it's really easy. You simply plug in the, the gallon jug to the uh, orifice right here and flip the switch. Now, it'll pump, the winterizing switch will pump it all throughout the entire system. What you have to do, though, is make sure you open up all the faucets, all the valves, so that it all flows through. Now, you know when you've got enough in the system is when that pink fluid comes through bright and pink through all your faucets and even the toilet then you know that your holding tanks are covered. It's a lot like bleeding the brake lines, right? Yep. So you crack them open and you make sure everything ran through. Nice and easy. Now you want to make sure that you bleed the whole system because in this particular one, look, you got a little door here, right? And this exterior spigot right here. Well, let's say you bleed the system and you pump the new stuff through there. Everything is good, but you forget this one little line and there's residual water in there and that freezes. Well, that's where your one little leak's going to be. And whether you got one leak or 50, it's just a giant pain in the butt. So make sure you bleed the whole system out and get that job done. It's easy to do. Now, the other thing you want to talk about is rodents with something like this, yeah. and they can be a pain in your neck. You know all about it yeah. when you talk about storing yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, you've got, whether it's an antique car or it's up in your attic, they can cause a lot of damage. And this is an expensive vehicle. You've got a, uh, a pricey interior. You've got all the custom upholstery. It can all be torn apart by simply not taking a few minutes to treat it. And one thing I like to use is they've got those little high-frequency plug-in deals. P emit a high-frequency, keep the mice away. Another trick I've learned, too, when storing vehicles is dryer sheets. Simply lay them out throughout the inside of the vehicle. Not only will they keep the mice away, you open the door and in the springtime, nice fresh scent, buddy. I'll tell you, if you've ever had mice get in your attic into some of your boxes, they shred everything and they can do the same thing in one of these. And like you said, that is no good. Now, one more thing you want to pay attention to before you store the RV or vehicle away is the tires. Because if you think about it, the load is going to be on these tires for a long time. And if you don't move them around and shuffle it around a little bit, yep. you can get flat spots on them. So what you want to do, ideally, is get the load off the tires if you can. That way you can store it and you're not going to get any flat spots. But before you do it, whether you can get it off the load or not, make sure that you put it up to the maximum high pressure rating that they've got on the side of the trailer. Yeah, that'll keep your tires good and keep them without those flat spots. Another thing we want to talk about when you're talking about winterizing is an expensive piece of the puzzle with these RVs, and that's treating that generator. Let's go up front. Now, we love this Cummins Onan 7000 generator. And, you know, when you're RVing, it's all about bringing the creature comforts of home out there to the RV. And this is great because we're going to have enough power with this 
to run two ACs, uh, television sets, all the electricity, everything in there. And you know, realistically, that's my idea, right? <laughs> right? I'm with the kid on that because you can notice how quiet this thing is when you know, the door's shut, you don't even know it's running. It's on anti-vibration springs there, so it doesn't yep. have any vibration up front. And the big thing is, man, it gives you all the power you want. So you want to make sure that you winterize it properly to make sure when you flip the switch, you've got that power back again in the springtime. So the biggest thing is it's changing out the fluids, <clears throat> change the fuel, change the fuel filter, and change the oil, you know? People don't realize that acid accumulates in oil over time, especially if you let it sit, it can actually eat up the engine bearings. Obviously, you don't want that to happen. This is an expensive unit. You want to make sure that it runs properly so you have all those creature comforts of home. So it simply comes down to with this unit, you crack this little bleed screw here, it'll drain out all the oil, and then you need to go ahead and change that oil filter and pump it up with some new oil. We're going to go ahead and fill this back up with this 4-cycle 10W30 from G-Oil. We've worked with G-Oil a lot in the past and it's cool because it's a high performance motor oil so it works good, it delivers the goods and it's biodegradable and safe for the environment. So really it's like a win-win for everybody. Yeah, you know, and this is a true high performance oil. You know, it was run in the IRL series, currently runs in the NASCAR series. It can handle the extreme duties of those engines and the wear and tear they can put on oil itself and it protects it. So it's going to protect those applications, it'll protect your generator. And the best thing about it, made right here in the United States of America. Now, the other thing you need to do when you've got this thing stored is at least once a month, you want to exercise it, so to speak. And what I mean is fire it up, let it run for about two hours at three quarters capacity. This way, it'll kind of exercise the, the generator, keep everything moving inside. So when it comes springtime and you're ready to use it, you fire it up, hit the switch, and you are ready to go. You know, that leads to some more good news about this particular generator. The Cummins Zone 7000, with proper maintenance that you're talking about, this will probably outlast the rest of the RV. That's so that's pretty cool. Now, we need to go to break right now and finish the rest of this up. But when we come back, we've got a really cool deal that's going to help eliminate a lot of the headaches from the entire RV. Being experience. Welcome back. So before we went to break, I was talking about one of the potential headaches that you could have when you're RVing or pulling a trailer or anything like that. And that headache is leveling the trailer. Now let's say, of course, if you're rolling a toy hauler like this, you may not always be staying at a nice, perfectly level <laughs> campground. You're probably tucked out in the woods somewhere where you never know if you're on the side of a kind of a, a rolling hill, you want to level that out. And by the time you park and stop, I mean, that could take an hour, right? And that is where our new system comes in right here. And this is nice. It's the Level Up Automatic Six Point Leveling System from Lippert Components. And this is going to make your life a lot easier. Yeah, rather than wasting all that time trying to level up, or having to carry a bunch of stuff with you, you know, wood blocks or jack stands or whatever it might be to get level. Plus the fact that it's really a safety issue too, because not only do you have a big investment sitting on uh, jack stands or concrete blocks or whatever it might be, right. or yourself sitting inside, you know, it's much easier to do with a system like this. Now this one is nice. It's a six point system, which is great for a long trailer like this because you've got equal points of pickup. You've got one up front, be front before the axles and after them. This way it'll pick up nice and level. It won't twist the chassis at all, especially when you've got slide outs like this. You don't want to system where it might twist and then you won't be able to get the slide out, out or get it back in. They also talk about stability as well. Well, you want to have comfort when you're out on the campsite, right? You don't want this thing rocking in the wind or when you're walking around it moving on you. That's where this system comes into play. It allows you to be nice and stable and allow you to have a good time out of the campsite. Hey, the best part is it's easy to use. You simply come back here and you turn it on. So basically, once we want to disengage the truck from here, all we have to do is hit front and that will engage the landing gear right here on the front of the trailer. That lifts it up, that way we can disengage the hitch, pull the truck out of the way, and then all we have to do is hit auto level and one touch of the button and it starts doing all the work. You can simply sit back and watch or just go start yeah, you dig into the cooler at that point. <laughs> Let it do the work for you. Now, when it comes time to leave, it's just as easy as well because there's a, a nice little feature in here. What you do is you hold down the left and the right button, and it'll go right back to the pin height you were just at. So there's no guesswork involved. You don't spend a lot of time guessing around trying to find that pin height again. It does it for you, man. That's pretty cool. As easy as it is for the end user to use the system once it's installed, the installation itself can be a bit more cumbersome. Yeah, that's got to be done by factory trained technicians. Fortunately, there are some at Camping World right down the road, so we thought it would be cool to go ahead and send a camera down there and watch those guys do the work. Yeah, check this out. It was a great time to drop by Camping World. They just so happened to be doing a training class on the Level Up product, so it was all hands on deck for this one. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we have all the components included in the Level Up kit for the install. There are really three major components to this kit. You've got the cylinders, 
the power unit, and the fluid control system. After the kit is laid out, they need to make sure that the trailer has a good level stance. First, they measure in front of the axle to find the current ride height to the bottom I-beam. It's 23 inches. Then they do the same thing to the rear of the axle, and they also get 23 inches. So the coach is already level. If it wasn't, they could compensate in the brackets because the holes in the bracket allow for different bolting configurations. Now, in order to transfer the correct ride height to the bracket, that 23 inches has to be at the weld point where the bracket meets to the frame. Then they can lay the leg on the bracket and the bottom foot pad needs to be between eight and nine inches when fully retracted and that's where you can bolt your leg to the new bracket. Once that leg is bolted to the new bracket, it can get welded into place. An advantage to the hydraulic system is that the cylinders share the fluid in pairs, always maintaining even pressure per leg, giving the coach overall stability, never allowing accidental twisting of the frame. Now that the lines are plumbed and attached to each leg, they can go to work on the front two legs or the landing gear. So some modifications need to be made to the floor to make room for the new legs. After the new bracket is welded into place, they use a torch to cut out the floor and slide the new legs into position. Level Up is really a plug and play unit. This LCI controller handles all of the leveling from front to back and there is a similar unit that mounts in the center section that measures side to side. Well, that wraps up the Level Up install at Camping World. Meanwhile, let's head back to the shop and we'll show you how to correctly align any fifth wheel trailer. Traditionally, when people think about alignment, they only think about the tires on the front of their car or truck. But when it comes to hauling a big trailer like this, you can also think about the alignment with your trailer axles and those can get out of whack. Now think about it, that out of whack is always due to uneven weight distribution. So when the trailer is manufactured and everything is bolted and welded into place, then it's filled up with furniture and other things, and then somebody like Bruno comes along and buys it and fills it up with a bunch more stuff. Yeah, the end user is the problem when it comes to having misalignment because it comes square from the factory. By the time you get it, you've got a bunch of furniture, a bunch of stuff in it. You put your toys in the back, you put sure. your toolboxes, and you really throw off the distribution of weight inside, which twists everything and throws the alignment off a of track. Well, the way we can fix it is by using a very cool tool from the guys at Mobile Outfitters. It's the Correct Track Trailer Alignment System. It's gonna allow us to compensate for any end user damage to our balance of the vehicle. Now the first thing we need to do is come down here and take a couple of measurements and what we want to do is get a fixed point right here where the pin of the trailer is and measure to the front side of the tires on each side and that will, that will let us determine if the distance is the same and, and how our axle is twisted. So what we do is in anything else like when you say measure twice, cut once, we measured a couple times and we took our average on each side. So over here on the right our average came out to 22 feet 9 and a quarter inches. Over here on the left hand side it came out to 22 nine. So we had a difference of a quarter inch from side to side. Now we can use this and we can adjust it and we can either push that side back a quarter inch or bring this side up a quarter inch. It really doesn't make much difference either way. Now we had a very cool tool to determine those distances but at home don't be frightened. You, it's something you guys can do. Just use a plumb bob and a string or, or a tape measure and you can get the same measurements. Yep. But like Matt said make sure you've got it all weighted down make sure you're nice and flat and take those times with the take time with your measurements. Now when it comes to using the system this is how you make up for the misalignments. Now this this right here is the mounts and this is going to relocate the mount for your spring. Now traditionally be mounted right here, what we're doing is we're moving it down to this hole and you can see there's a slot inside of here. That allows us to, with a click so to speak, you can adjust it a quarter inch right there, two clicks right there, puts you at a half inch and allows you to move that point of that spring and that axle forward or back to correct the misalignment issues you've got with your rig. So once you get everything locked down and in place, you want to check your work and you're going to do that with a secondary set of measurements, but before you do that, you want to make sure that you roll the axle at least one full rotation. In fact, better yet, if you've got a couple minutes, drag it around the neighborhood or around the block once or twice, bring it back. That way, the suspension has a chance to settle and everything's in place before you take those secondary measurements. Yep, so with this in place, you'll make those secondary measurements, you'll go again to that front tire, and then you can go in here and make your adjustments front or back and get make sure everything's square with that front axle. Then use that front axle to measure each of the other axles. Now you've got a nice square uh, trailer going down the road. You're not dragging it, you're using it behind you. It's going with you and you're saving time tires. A tire blow, it's never a good thing, never happens at a good time, and it can be dangerous and tear up your rig. Nope, it's the correct track from Mobile Outfitters, and it's going to help you avoid all that mess.
Hey, welcome back. We've already addressed the wheel and tire misalignment issue we had with our RV trailer. Now it's time to address an issue we had with the tires of this boat trailer. Now here is the old tire we took off, and I don't know if you can see it right here, but you, there's a bunch of tread gone. I mean, it's had like a wheel hop issue going on. It was pretty much eating itself up, basically an accident waiting to happen. So we're going to go ahead and replace this tire with a brand new one, but an upgraded tire as well. Now the one we've chosen is from Carlisle. It is their Ultra Sport RH trailer tire. Now for those of you who don't know, there is a difference between a trailer tire and not automotive tire. They're built differently. They're built for trailering, which means that they've got the capability of dissipating heat at a very high level. They can handle a heavy load being towed on it, and they will last in terms of giving you a smoother ride and durability. So you definitely want to look for a trailer tire for your trailers. I know it sounds ridiculous, but a lot of people don't know the difference. Now, when going with this Carlisle tire, we're going to get another benefit in terms of having a sport look to it because it's a low profile tire that doesn't look like a trailer tire. It's low profile in the look in overall diameter. It doesn't have the bulba, bubble side you see right here, which most tra trailer tires have. It's got a squared off shoulder. So this is gonna give you a high performance look and it's a great thing to add when you've got you know, a boat trailer, you've got an RV trailer or an ATV trailer. It's gonna give you that sport look, but all the performance you'd expect from a high end trailer tire. Also with the low profile, we're gonna get a little bit of more clearance right here on the fender wells. The other one's really close to rubbing. So any clearance we can gain is gonna be a benefit. So let's get this old one here out of the way and then we can mount up our new tire. All right, let's lower this thing down and see what our clearance looks like. I think we picked up a little bit of room here. Yeah, you can see right here, you got a little bit more clearance than we had before. It's not a lot, but before you could barely get a finger between the two, so that's nice. It'll give us a little bit more clearance, and gotta admit, I like the overall look of this new Ultra Sport tire from Carlisle, man. Kind of gives it a little bit of performance feel to a boat trailer, and it's got all the benefits you'd want out of a true trailering tire. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. Ever since I won my first world championship in 2009, I felt a little guilty that you didn't have a championship trophy of your own, so oh. this year I dedicated myself to bringing home a gold Wally just for you, buddy. This one's for me? For you. Oh, dude, that is so cool. I shined him up just as you requested to. Nice. Congratulations, dude. Nice job. Thanks, brother. You bro, are man. the world champion, two times running, and eventually, if I keep working hard, I might one day have my own cooler, too. You know? Gotta have dreams. You can dream, kid. Set my goals up high. These are the classic Parts of America catalogs for Chevy trucks. You think about these guys as really a one-stop shop for any and all things Chevy truck. So you've got six catalogs that break up the model years from 1947 up to 1998. And if you open up, you'll find just about anything you need, whether it's an obscure part like a door sill plate screw or mirrors or just about anything in between. You'll find the parts you need at the price you want to pay and you'll get it quick, whether you look through their catalogs or you order online. You can get your free catalog from the guys at Classic Parts of America. They've been in business for 30 years and they're located in the Midwest, which means they can ship parts to you and you can get them quickly. That's the name of the game. It's Classic Parts of America catalogs for Chevy trucks. Let's go inside the Duplicolor garage. Duplicolor, yes you can in your garage. When it comes to customizing your vehicle, one of the easiest and most noticeable things you can do is change the look of the wheels. We've done that a lot in the past with these two can systems from Duplicolor. Now this is the shadow, that's the copper plate that we did not too long ago. They've got a base coat and a finish coat on top of that and they look phenomenal when you're done. Now here is the latest, this is Hyper Silver. So we've got this nice black wheel here in the shop. It looks great, there's nothing wrong with it. But for some of the projects that I really want to do, I think this is going to pop a little bit better and it's going to look awesome when it's done. As always, when you're doing a project like this, be sure to do it in a well-ventilated area. And with something like this, it's all about the prep. So here's what we need to do. We need to scuff the whole surface for maximum adhesion for the paint. Once it's all scuffed, we can take the Duplicolor prep spray, get it in there and get everything good and clean. Then we'll be ready for the first coats. The first thing that I want to do is apply two really thin, light dust coats and get the job started. Now, it's important. Don't be in a hurry to see the results and lay too much paint on too soon. You want to take your time with this and then that way you'll get the look that you wanted. So two thin dust coats, then we'll let it dry for about 10 minutes and then we'll come in with the final base coat. We'll let that dry for 30 minutes, then we're ready to apply the clear. 
With this Toucan Hyper Silver system, we can not only do this job ourselves, but we can save a ton of money in the process. It's just another way the guys at Duplicolor are helping you restore, restyle, and protect your vehicle in your garage. For more information about Hyper Silver or any of the other Toucan systems, be sure to check out Duplicolor's website. You have that under control? I've got it, buddy. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. So today we've been working on a variety of different engines. Now, it could go from the Cummins Zona Generator in the back of the trailer to the 2013 Polaris Ranger, which we actually didn't do anything on, but the thing is cool looking and we need to take that out later on. And now we're working on this boat. The common theme to everything that we're doing today, as far as the engines go, is the fact that we can really improve the performance and the maintenance and the cleanliness by using Z-Max. Yeah, what Z-Max does is it works with your oil. So you put in the amount of oil that's recommended for your application, then add Z-Max to it. Now, by adding Z-Max, you're not changing the oil at all. It actually works with the oil. The oil acts as a carrying agent to bring Z-Max throughout the engine. Z-Max is a micro-lubricant that works at a much smaller level than any oil can. It's not only give you increased lubricity, but also go ahead and clean out the engine. So when we pour it into the engine itself, into the oil system, what we're doing is, is we're bringing back combustion. We're cleaning out the uh, carbon buildups on the rings that allow it to seal better. You'll clean off the valves to get all that carbon buildup off, so you're going to get better combustion, you're going to get better power and more efficiency. Now, when you pour it into a new vehicle like that Polaris, it's going to allow you to maintain that like new power. It'll prevent carbon buildup and allow that thing to run like new for a long period of time. I think the best thing you said is the fact that it's so easy, but you're just adding it to the existing oil, right? Now, I didn't think it could get any easier, but they went and did it. They created this package right here that actually you take a look at it and it has the markings right on the bottle. So it'll tell you, hey, there's 12 ounces here for the fuel tank, two ounces for the power steering, six for the transmission, and 12 for the engine. So it's great. There's one bottle for the whole vehicle. Yeah, Matt, you hit the nail right on the head. Whether it's old or new, no matter what the application, Z-Max will work on any engine. This tip is brought to you by Z-Max. Performance you can feel. So Matt, all day long I've been wondering, what is the deal with the Polaris? Because we certainly weren't going to work on it. It's brand new. It is brand new. There's nothing else that needs to be done. My advice to you would be don't overthink it. It's playtime, dude. Let's have some fun. You know what? I like where your head is, kid. You know, we got a lot of work done today. That travel trailer, you know, we learned how to winterize that thing. It's ready to go. It's springtime. We can let it rip with that. We got the boat ready. Now it's time to have a little fun. Break this baby in. All right, man. And we'll see you guys next time right here on Truck U. Hang on, dude. See if we can jump the creek.